welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning, it's 5 a.m. An investigation is underway this morning after what appears to be body parts found in a lake. We've got more details about the scene at the Buena Vista Aquatic Recreational Area. And the search is on to find another missing person in the Kern River. This marks the fourth person to disappear in the river this year. We have more on where he was last seen. And local diving clubs came together to honor the memory of the 13-year-old whose life was cut short. Details on how the community is showing their support for the morning family. Well, good morning. It's 5 a.m. I'm Nicole Gitsky in for Maddie Jansen alongside Taylor Schaub in for Alex Fisher. It is a warm morning out there already. Yes, it is. And, you know, it was a hot weekend, too. I don't think I've ever experienced temperatures that high. I know Bakersfield and Kern County is known for it, but this is the first time I got into the 106, 107 range since I've lived here. It was hot out there. Let's send things over to Kevin Trout with a look outdoors. It's nice to see two new faces on sunrise here. It's going to be a great morning and it's still going to be a hot one out there. Again, yesterday was hot. We'll get to that temperature in just a second, but I want to show you something kind of cool from CHP out of Mojave and take a look. It's Comet Neo Eyes, uh, and you can see the patrol car there capturing this beautiful shot out in the Mojave Desert. We want to remind you if there's ever a weather event that you'd like to share with us, you can send it to 17 News at KGT.com and in the subject line, just put weather. As we take a look at yesterday's high, it was hot 108 degrees. So, yeah. A lot of people trying to find a way to cool down. We're going to see a little bit of a cool down today, but we're still going to be right around 105. Outside, the sun is slowly starting to rise out of the east and currently 79 degrees, so it is a warm start. We have a, no winds to talk about. I do expect a light breeze to pick up as we progress into the afternoon. And you can see here on the satellite and radar, nothing to show you in terms of cloud cover. Hey, take a look at our dog walk forecast, and you can see we start out in the 80s and throughout the afternoon. Yeah, we'll want to make sure the dogs have plenty of water and shade if they're going to be outside because temperatures by three o'clock are going to be right near 104. 66 out of Tehachapi right now under a calm wind. I do expect the winds to pick up a little bit this afternoon. No uh, heat advisories, even though we're going to be near 105, but we will see the winds pick up out on the west side. We have a wind advisory in place and still lots of heat off to the east. Here's a look at our wind forecast as we go throughout the day and why we're going to put that wind advisory out there. You can see the winds pick up out of Lost Hills and into the desert. Some gusty winds right around 930 this evening, so just keep that in mind. Here's a look at our hour by hour forecast out of the mountains, and you can see starting out near 70 and then we'll progress and the breeze picks up and we'll be in the lower 90s this afternoon. More weather in just a little bit. First, back over to you guys. Thanks for that, Kevin. Well, the Kern County Sheriff's Office is investigating after swimmers at the lake noticed what appeared to be human remains. That happened around 7 Sunday evening at the Buena Vista Aquatic Recreational Area. Homicide detectives and the coroner responded to the scene. Lieutenant Cesar Oyage says it's too early to know whether these are in fact human remains, but he confirmed an investigation is underway. You may recall in September 2018, a human leg was found in the lake. It's unclear if that incident is related to the Discovery Sunday. Well, this weekend, a fourth person went missing in the Kern River. Search and rescue teams recovered the man's body Saturday. The sheriff's office says they received a report of the man going into the river near Miracle Hot Springs. The man described to be in his mid-30s from the Los Angeles area, but he was not wearing a life vest. Park ranger deputies and the Kern County Fire Department took part in the search for the man and used a helicopter to search the water for him. Now, with the increased heat that we are seeing, especially over the next week, people are going to want to gravitate toward the river. It is still a very dangerous place to be. Uh, you treat it with caution, use life jackets, um, keep an eye on your loved ones, don't consume alcoholic beverages when you're near and around the river. And if you want to enjoy the river properly, I encourage people to use uh, professional rafting service. Officials say the helicopter located the man's body on the river bank nearby. The Kern County Coroner's Office is still working to identify the man. 
This serves as an opportunity to remind people of the importance of water safety. Public Health says that while water can be a lot of fun, there can be a risk of serious danger. Most drownings happen when children go unsupervised. So make sure you always keep an eye on the little ones in the pool. This also applies to the rivers and lakes that can be unpredictable. Public Health also urges people to get familiar with CPR and other first aid. CPR is a life-saving measure that you can perform on somebody as you wait for paramedics to arrive. Public Health also advises putting up a fence or gate to keep children away from a pool if nobody's there to watch them. Of course, if you're out on a boat, make sure you wear a life jacket. Well, if you need to escape the heat, local cooling centers are now open across Kern County. Temperatures are high enough where certain buildings are now open for anyone to come in and cool off. Officials are encouraging you to wear masks and practice social distancing if you plan to use a cooling center. You can find the closest cooling center to your neighborhood on KGET.com. Just click on the hot link icon for a list. Well, drivers from local car clubs came out in full force to support and raise money for the family of Patricia Alatore, the local teen whose life was brutally cut short earlier this month. Investigators believe Alatore was kidnapped and murdered by Armando Cruz, who allegedly drove from Inglewood in Southern California to Bakersfield to meet the teen after they connected on social media. He, pled, he has pled not guilty to a dozen felonies. Last night, uh, hundreds of cars met at Mesa Marin Sports Complex to cruise for Patty, as she was known. They then drove to the 13-year-old's memorial in southwest Bakersfield. I give all my support to the family. Uh, I know it's going to be a hard time, but just take it day by day. Experiencing, like, seeing that tragedy with the family, we really want to make sure that you know, the community outreach is here strong to represent Bakersfield and to sh uh, show that support for, for the families. The evening also fe featured folk dancing and candle lighting. The family of a San Francisco woman is asking for help after she went missing Tuesday in Lost Hills. This is a photo of 22-year-old Jezebel Yana. Her family says she was traveling to Los Angeles when she stopped at the Love's Travel Stop on Highway 46 near Interstate 5 in Lost Hills. They say she then walked away from the truck stop around 11 a.m. Her family says Yana has mental health issues. They are concerned for her safety. If you've seen Yana or know where she might be, call the Kern County Sheriff's Office at 861-3110. Now to education news. The Norris School District is set to meet today to plan out the upcoming school year. The Board of Trustees made no definite decision last week on how kids would return to school. Members reportedly talked about traditional classroom learning with precautions and distancing or virtual learning. We could see a decision today. School districts across the country are looking at hybrid approaches that could mix online learning with kids also having the option to return to classrooms. And the larger Bakersfield City School District will have a special meeting this Tuesday on the same topic. The meeting will open at 1 p.m. and will be held over Zoom. The board will review and possibly approve a roadmap for returning to school. Bakersfield College is offering a program to make teaching online a little easier. BC announced it will offer a new certificate in online teaching. Since the coronavirus pandemic shut down schools, many educators and students alike are wondering what the future holds. If online school is the solution moving forward, teachers can now get certified in teaching online. BC is partnering with KCSOS for the certificate. If the course focuses on how to better use online sites for teaching, like Canvas, and how to help students adjust to the type, this type of learning. Two sections of this course will be offered this summer, and classes start today. It runs until August 6th. We'll get ready for some lane closures on Golden State Avenue. The closure started last night, and they continued today. There will be a full closure for northbound 204 that started at 8 p.m. Sunday. Crews will be paving the road this week between X Street and Highway 99. For the rest of the week until Thursday, both directions of State Route 204 will be reduced to just one lane overnight. But the road will remain open, will reopen at 6 a.m. each morning.
Coronavirus news around the nation. South Carolina reported its first child death from the virus Saturday. The State Department of Health and Environmental Control confirms the child was under the age of five. This comes as South Carolina reported over 2,000 new COVID cases. It's the highest since the pandemic began. Health officials also say younger people continue to contribute to positive cases. Since the start of June, there has been a 436% increase in newly reported cases among the age 21 to 30 group. Well, here in Kern County, public health announced another 163 cases Sunday morning. There were no new deaths to report. The local toll stands at 97 people dead from COVID-19. We are seeing more people isolated at home. The number is now over 2,000. Well, 137 are isolated at local hospitals. And we want to remind you, many of these cases are from weeks ago. We're just getting the results now. Our peak day of infections continues to be June 23rd. Over 340 cases are linked to that date, just two days after Father's Day. And a reminder, if you have had coronavirus and recovered, you may help people by donating convalescent plasma. People who recover from COVID-19 develop antibodies that can be transfused to other patients to help them survive. It's part of an experimental treatment approved by the FDA. Houchin says anyone who has recovered from the virus and is willing to help can call 616-2575. Kern's district attorney is opposing a plan that could move thousands of inmates out of prison due to concerns over COVID-19. The Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation announced that 8,000 inmates are eligible to be let go to prevent outbreaks in state prisons. Right now, the CDCR reports over 2,300 uh, infected inmates. 31 have died. According to the department, of in, uh, the department, the inmates that are being considered are already on track to finish their sentences in less than one year. The CDR, or CD, CDCR also says they can't be sex offenders or currently serving time for violent crimes. But today, District Attorney Cynthia Zimmer accused Governor Newsom of using the pandemic to, quote, cripple the justice system. Here's part of her statement. She said Governor Newsom has made clear time and time again his intent to fill our communities with violent felons. He has repeatedly issued com uh, com com he has re repeatedly let go of convicted notorious killers and now has opened wi wide the floodgates for violent felons to be released into our streets. We reached out to the DA's office to clarify, and they responded, saying that the CDCR may, have, may release people whose current sentences aren't for violent crimes, but they may have had violent charges in the past. Well, two Kern County churches will be closed for the next two to three weeks, possibly longer. The parishes of St. Augustine's Catholic Church in Lamont and St. Thomas Catholic Church in Arvin made the announcement late this afternoon. They say all scheduled events, including weddings, funerals, quinceañeras, christenings, communions, confirmations, and baptisms are canceled. There will also be no live streams of Sunday Mass of Worship. St. Augustine Church said in a statement they will continue to keep the community informed as they get permission from the diocese to reopen. An annual gathering of Jehovah's Witness is also derailed by COVID-19. Typically, the witnesses hold conventions across the U.S. In Bakersfield, they held their convention at the Mechanics Bank Arena, but it's canceled this year and will be held online instead. It began today and can be watched on Jehovah's Witness website, jw.org. Public Health announced another 163 cases Sunday morning. There were no new deaths to report. The local toll stands at 97 people dead from COVID-19. We were seeing more people isolated at home. The number is now over 2,000, while 137 are isolated at local hospitals. And we want to remind you, many of these cases are from weeks ago. We're just getting the results now. Our peak day of infections continues to be June 23rd. Over 340 cases are linked to that date, just two days after Father's Day. We've got your coronavirus update out of Washington this morning. The Trump administration is trying to reopen schools faster than some districts want. They've been discrediting health experts Dr. Anthony Fauci and Democrats are promising to approve more coronavirus money by the end of the month. Tracy Potts has more.
difference and, a and that there's not education secretary betsy devos pushing the trump plan to fully reopen schools in person five days a week there's nothing in the data that suggests that kids being in school is in any way dangerous this is appalling some districts say they're not ready and will start at least partially online but we also want to do it uh, and make sure that our kids are going to be as safe as possible so we're not going to be rushed into this. The Trump team also trying to discredit infectious disease expert Dr. Anthony Fauci, who says he has not briefed the president personally in two months. Dr. Fauci is not 100% right. He looks at it from a very narrow public health point of view. I expect that we will get a bill done. And Democrats are promising a relief bill by the end of the month that includes unemployment, food aid, child care, health care, and help for people losing their homes. But all that would still have to get through the Senate, where Republicans have been reluctant to spend more. Tracy Potts, NBC News. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.